Thank goodness it's Friday. Here is your read aloud for Friday, April 3rd. Chapter 15. When a good idea goes bad. Get out of the way, stupid, said Jason Cameron, this big guy who'd been calling me stupid ever since second grade. He'd been huge back then, too. Everybody said he had a gland problem. But this is our main invention, I explained, showing the wheels on the tray. In the cafeteria of the future, you use zip tray to quickly slide your tray down the line to the delicious corn dogs. Well, this ain't the future, stupid. And then Jason picked me up, sat me down on the tray, and gave me a good shove sideways. Yo, David, you forgot your corn dog. The good news was that my invention worked really well. I sped down the food line in like two seconds flat. The bad news was that there was nothing to stop the tray at the end of the counter. I flew off the tray rails and smashed onto the very hard, very sticky cafeteria floor. That wasn't part of the plan. Give me a corn dog, potty mouth, snarled Jason, with extra bacon and double cheese. You were supposed to use the zip tray, you fluffer knuckle, Michael said. That's half of the whole hickle snickle pock science project. What'd you call me? A fluffer knuckle. Jason frowned. What's that? What you are. I was glad to see that Michael didn't back down. But now the crowd was five deep for dogs. Just give us our food, potty mouth, they were shouting. Michael stood behind the counter, unsure what to do next. This was when Kea Kaneki stopped forward and since she was a cheerleader, started leading a cheer. Give me a C. Give me an O. Give me an R-N. D-O-G. What's that spell? It took most of the kids like five seconds to figure out one. Um, corn dogs, the mom finally shouted. Give me a corn dog. Hands reached over the sneeze guards. Elbows flew. Some guys climbed on top of the tray rails and leapt forward the, over the glass partition so they could raid Michael's tray. Get your hoopy doodle paws off my sniffle piggle corn dogs, you horn swogglers. The mob kept chanting and grabbing corn dogs and shoving one another. Michael had no choice but to retreat. The corn dog tray clattered to the floor. Somebody knocked over the cardboard display. Somebody else started using the zip tray to skateboard around the kitchen equipment. And, of course, that's exactly when the judges came in to grade our exhibit. Everybody just froze and acted innocent. And what do we have here? asked Vice Principal Driscoll. Something totally stupid for science fair. Cracked Kea. Corn dogs aren't exactly scientific. But, 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 sputtered Anna. Kea propped her fists on her hips and pouted at one of the teachers, Mr. Stafford. Mr. Stafford, you're a science teacher. Are corn dogs even an invention? Well, I suppose they were at one point before the first cook skewered the first hot dog on a stick and dipped it into a vat of cornbread batter, but I failed to see. Long story short, our science project was a complete bust. I lost my zip tray. The skateboarding kid never came back. We were written up for unauthorized use of school property. Nobody read Anna's display board about the cafeteria of the future, even though there was all sorts of good stuff on it about healthier food choices and improving the speed of service. We didn't win any ribbons. Everybody hated us, even though they ate all of our corn dogs. Plus, we had to buy the school a new tray to replace the one that dude skated away on. Once again, the whole school was laughing at us, but we were used to that. Hey, it's what we do. We're potty mouth, stupid, and Anna Britannica. We get laughed at. 
Chapter 16, Living Up to Our Names. After the science fair fiasco, Michael and I got really, really mad at the whole school. And you know what? In our humble opinions, the whole world totally deserved it. And since you were probably in the world back then, I guess that means we were mad at you too. Sorry about that. Our bad. We were both so angry, we started acting out, as a school psychologist called it. We called it something else. Payback time. We went to work. Michael was always pretty good at intimidating voices. He does a mean homer, not to mention an awesome family guy. One day, I went to see the school secretary, Mrs. Tutificio. The vending machine ate all my coins and left my goobers dangling. I told her, Mrs. Tutificio sighed heavily and then went with me to the cafeteria muttering, oh, How stupid can one boy be? The whole way. The second the coast was clear, Michael went in, grabbed the PA microphone, which looks like a telephone, and made a few announcements, sounding exactly like Principal Ferguson. This is Principal Ferguson speaking. You are all a bunch of fluffer knuckles who don't know your gizzle goops from your feeny bruckers. That is all. Everyone was super confused. It was great. Another time, I was so mad, I went absolutely nutso when my locker wouldn't unlock, even after I'd done the combination 15 times in a row. Open up! You got my lunch in there! Sludge Puggle! Um, that's not your locker. Definitely. Like I said, we were mad. The corner convenience store had mad magazines on its magazine rack. Get out of my friggledy biggledy face, Alfred E. Newman, said Michael. Yeah, we were even mad at mad. I think we're going to end up in reform school, I told Michael right after we got so mad at a pile of dog poop sitting in the middle of the sidewalk that we kicked it out of our way. Okay, that was stupid. Reform school or worse, said Michael, much worse. I hope you enjoyed today's two chapters. Have a great weekend.